That opening sequence was me walking into the shop with my decibel meter in my hand. Uh, set the C weighted so it's getting like it's reading the bass as well. And uh, the music playing through these four speakers right here. And I had this running for about an hour and a half before I came back in. And before that I had the amp turned on uh, for about two hours before that, ever since I got up this morning to get a reading of how hot the amp gets when it's under load. Now, I know that this is not the full load that the amp will see in the future, but it will give a, a pretty good indication of how it's going to perform. It's very much like the, um, the distortion measurements that I ran on the individual amps, just to give me a ballpark to know whether it's good enough or not. So um, fairly high output uh, volume, uh, I think higher um, than my listening room, almost certainly. I'm, I'm reading down there, not really much higher than 85, and that would be on peaks with this meter set to C. And um, shop is not overly hot. It never really gets hot in here, even in the summer when it's fairly hot outdoors. Uh, 20 degrees Celsius. I've got my uh, <laughs> my kitchen thermometer brought out and set to Celsius to get a reading on the heat sinks. And I'm also pointing it directly at the output transistors, like the top of those inside, so I can get the temperature more direct. And those never go up above um, 30 degrees Celsius. Um, under idle or under this load, at least, while it was running. I turned the amp off about an hour ago, but I left the music playing in a continuous loop on my laptop. I forgot to shut that down. So just to show you that there's no trickery going on, I'm going to switch the amp back on and you'll hear what's coming out of the speakers. <laughs> Look how long it takes for <laughs> for it to shut off. That's a good, what, five, six seconds? Um, hitting, well, at this distance anyway, hitting almost 100 decibel peaks on this meter. And this one's fairly accurate. I, I measure, I, like, I compared it to the other one I have. And also measured, um, compared it to the U-Mic 1 in um, uh, REW. So, yeah. Um, I don't know how accurate this thing is in particular, like I use it in the kitchen, like I said, it give you a ballpark, I think, figure, but it does show that the thing is not overheating. So I've been doing these, um, uh, these tests all the way through, measuring uh, the, the temperature to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to have something there that's going to catch on fire in my basement. I don't want that, obviously. I'm not going to build, you know, an incinerator, a death trap. 
Okay, so yeah, it's an important part of it because I'm packing a lot of stuff in this case, although it's a huge case. And those heat sinks are bigger than normal. So that's the reason why it's running so cool. Also, I should point out that I'm not running a very high bias current on the amplifiers. Uh, there's no need to. The distortion, as I showed in the measurement, is quite low with the um, bias current at a, what I would consider a low to low standard uh, setting, all right, which is around 25, 30. Um, okay, well, I should point out that I did set the tweeters a little bit higher. They're running about 35 milliamps through. Whereas the other ones are, are progressively lower. So you go with the tweeter, set it around 35, mid range, set it around 30, uh, mid woofer, uh, set it around 25, and then the woofer is set around 20. So it gets progressively lower on the bias current. Now you need to know what bias current is. Basically, what it is is how much power the amp is drawing just sitting there with no signal going through it. Okay, and your heat sinks are going to get warm because of that. So, yeah, I'm running a low bias current overall. Like I said, a little bit higher for the tweeter, but nothing that approaches Class A operation, like a, one of the, some of the really um, the some of the Class A amps that get really super hot. I, I simply don't need that. I don't want it. So. The other advantage of running a fairly low bias current like that is that it reduces hum and noise because the higher you run that bias, the greater the hum and noise will be. All right, so I can shut that song down. I don't need that playing anymore. Um, got new music. Just got these yesterday. They were sitting in the shop here because I opened the package out here and then I forgot about them. But um, I'll be ripping these this evening. First one is box set from Van Halen. It has six. Uh, their first, well, I don't know if there's the first. I think it's all of their studio albums. All six of them. Um, Van Halen. Van Halen 2. <laughs> the first two. Great imagination shown in the titling of those ones. Uh, Women and Children First. Uh, Fair Warning. Diver Down. And 1984. I had the first two, the first two, I well, the first one I had on cassette, proper cassette. Never had any other stuff on vinyl. Uh, the second one, Van Halen 2, I, I, another example of me taping it off the radio. Um, I remember when Diver Down came out because I remember distinctly going out and buying that cassette. I can like picture the scene in my head buying that cassette. Uh, 1984, that was... In 19, well, when that came out, I was like 17, 18 years old, and it was being played to death on the radio, so I never did get it. Uh, but I have it now. So, yeah, all their best stuff is here. And, and you know, looking at the discs, I don't see any compromise here. You know, they're in their little paper envelopes, which I'm totally okay with, because like I said, you know, I take all this stuff, I rip it to my computer, and I listen to it from there. Yeah. Next one is uh, Thin Lizzy, Live and Dangerous. There's another example of one that I taped from the radio and played it to death myself. And I'm not normally a big fan of live stuff uh, unless it's a live performance. I mean, that's a, that's a totally different thing, right? You go to a concert, that's, that's a different thing. A live taping is not so hot. And this, to be honest, is not great, but I played it so much and I've gotten so used to it. I don't like hearing it any other way. So yeah, Live and Dangerous, all their good stuff is on here. Um, pro considered, I think, by a lot of people, one of the, the best live albums of all time, certainly by me. I don't like, like I said, I don't like very many live albums, but I do absolutely like this one. Big Thin Lizzy fan.